so I had to use a wheelchair and then as soon as I was in a wheelchair that's when I realised that my friends didn't want to be my friends anymore. Skeletal dysplasia is short stature. Um, my bones fused when I was really young and basically it's it gives me a lot of pain but I kind of live my life as it is and I'm in a wheelchair um, due to my pain and yeah I'm basically very very short. <laughs> um, I actually don't know anyone with what I have, it's that rare so I've never met anyone with like any, any of my symptoms or anything like that. Um, I went to America a few years ago to try and find someone like me and even the doctors over there were that confused, they were like we have no clue what you've got. So yeah, they couldn't actually diagnose me and yeah, so I'm still got, I'm still undiagnosed to this day. Oh, being left out was horrible for me. It was so, like, it was just a really horrible world to be in. I didn't, like, enjoy being into, going into school was horrible. Didn't like waking up knowing that I had to go into that environment where I was very alone. I just felt like, I don't know, I just didn't feel like my age group and I didn't feel like I belonged in my year. If I was in like class with them, I just was like, I don't feel like I'm a part of you. And yeah, I just felt very, very different. So I did really, really struggle going home. And just, I was constantly like really upset and yeah, just very, very like down and sad. I feel like growing up was, it was, you know, fine for the first few years when I was, at, at the time I used to be able to walk because I didn't have pain. Um, and then as soon as I got to high school, that's when my condition kind of affected me a lot more because I ended up stopping walking, I was in a lot of pain, so I had to use a wheelchair and then as soon as I was in a wheelchair, that's when I realised that my friends didn't want to be my friends anymore. I was left out a lot at school. Well, I wasn't even left out, I just had no friends and it was very isolating and not a very nice place to be. So that's when I really like struggled with you know, my condition and fe felt like I wasn't, you know, just like everybody else. When I was 15, I ended up being re really ill for, like, just for the flu, like, for two weeks. I was in bed, um, but it become to a point where I was going on, like, sitting on the toilet because I wouldn't sit down anywhere. And as soon as I'd moved to sit down, I was in horrific pain and it was all in my hips and we didn't know why and you blame it on the flu we're like well you're just ill it's not going to be anything else is it and it just wouldn't go away and the pain was so bad and then my dad took me to a and e which you know it's not something i ever would do like go to a and e but you know it was the only way we could find out more about what was going on and i went to a and e and they did like an x-ray on my hips and like my, my knees and stuff and the guy, the doctor actually said to me, he was like, I don't know how you're not crying right now and how, I don't know how you're smiling. He said, because your pain you're in right now is, he went, I can't even explain how much pain you're in. But cause I was just like laughing and being me, I was hiding it really well. And he said, all the doctors in, who looked at my scan was shocked at how bad my joints were and how wrecked my hip joints were. Um, and yeah, that's where the journey began really, the long road of like getting semi better. When a doctor says to you, I don't know how you're still laughing right now and smiling, that's when I feel like it hit my dad more than me obviously, but it, I was like, oh, okay, this isn't, you know, something small, this is obviously quite serious. I feel like going through all of that and then my family being told like, listen, if you're gonna have that, you, you know, your daughter can't walk ever again. I feel like we, we went through that many years of my pain and literally having no quality of life and my mum and dad seeing me just deteriorate every single day. My mum and dad were also kind of in that mindset that they were like, what do we want? Do we want a daughter who's pain free and being able to have a quality of life or a daughter who can walk but also could be in, you know, so much pain and it, you've just got to weigh that up and we were all in that mindset. I wasn't bothered. I, I was just like, you know what, I want to do what's best for my life and think about the future. And my mum and dad were like, well, you access, you access the world anyway in a wheelchair. So 
think about it as you're just going to be in the wheelchair and it's just it's just a new life isn't it and I got so used to it anyway I wasn't bothered and I'm much happier making that decision and yeah my mum and dad supported it and you know they were throughout the whole time I was in hospital incredible and yeah it's just much better and happier now which is obviously what I wanted. At the time when I was going through all of this that's when I did actually start um, like doing my makeup in I kind of like experimented because that was like my only outlet of like you know creativity it was my freedom it was my escape like it was the only thing that did make me happy and I enjoyed it but that was only because of YouTube itself because I watched a lot of YouTube like the OG YouTubers Zoe, Alfie you know the British YouTubers they were the ones who I was like oh my god I want to do that I loved it I enjoyed it so much and they were my happiness because I'd come home from school and had a bad day with my friends I was really struggling with my pain as well so it was like I was getting hit by both ends it wasn't just being left out by people I was also having to mentally deal with oh my god I'm in a wheelchair I'm in pain I'm struggling I'm also not feeling well because of my pain medication so I'd come home watch YouTube and I'd be like that would be my favorite part of the day coming home and like being friends with these YouTubers who had no idea I existed but that was like my the best part of my day and I'm so grateful to have that because that would have been you know a struggle without it but that if it wasn't for that I wouldn't have been inspired to do makeup and things and even though I was in hospital I'd still bring like my little makeup back and like try and do my makeup in hospital they'd be like what are you doing but it was just always like part of me to do what I loved even if I was in agony I still wanted to do it and that was just like my only bit of positivity at a dark time. Did anyone ever tell you that you couldn't do I feel like a lot of people at school didn't, didn't kind of believe in me. I feel like most people did and I was always known as like, you know, the girl who didn't really have much opportunity or she didn't really have much of a future. No one like looked at me and was like, oh my God, you'd be amazing at this. Like no one said anything really positive. It was just like, everything was negative or everything was just like oh you'd be alright in an office and that wasn't me that that yeah I might that might have just been something that people have said and I did kind of think of that I'm like I was like maybe that's the only job I could do because I used to go to like work experience and I'd go to you know big department stores and say like can I get work experience and they'd shut me down they'd be like no sorry or yeah and they'd be like really funny with me being in their workplace because I was in a wheelchair so in a way it did kind of knock my confidence and I feel like not just people around me at school kind of knocked me but kind of like the industry in a weird way I was hoping I would want to you know work on a counter but I couldn't and then I kind of like if it wasn't for like my, again my family and me kind of like pushing through it I definitely wouldn't have carried on but yeah it was very like hit and miss with people and I feel like definitely not a lot of people believed in me. So with my job I get sent a lot of like PR products, new launches um, and I'll get on like the PR lists and when I was obviously like growing my platform at first I didn't really get much so it wasn't a big deal but then obviously when things started like growing a lot quickly and I started seeing like you know getting all of these incredible products from brands I was like oh my god this is insane like felt so grateful but then when I started to go on social media I saw these same brands who had sent me stuff doing this like events like these big PR events or you know launches or just whatever like these influencer trips and I'd be on their PR list so these same people would get the same products as me but I never got chosen to be on these events and on these influencer trips because of my wheelchair I mean, a wheelchair it's not a very clean look for a brand is it it's like me in a wheelchair and, and it sounds awful but I get it like I, I get what they're probably looking at they're probably thinking oh we don't want you to represent like you know it, this beautiful event they've got to make sure one is accessible which is probably harder for a brand they probably wouldn't even want to think about that they probably will think oh whatever it's we'll just throw it there they won't think about including everyone and I think that's important as well as including it on social media you've got to represent it on these events because these brands do these huge PR events because it's a great way to promote their product and 
even me being a person on social media, but I still flick through just like everybody else. Like you do it, don't you? Like, oh wow, and you enjoy it. But then when you're seeing other people's events, at, at these big events and stuff, and then you don't see anyone who's anything, like any, any diversity in the group of like the events and stuff, it's like, oh, that looks a bit like weird. And it would just make me feel a bit left out. And that's when I was like, oh, it's a bit funny, isn't it? Like, I'm there promoting their product for free, but they wouldn't even care to go, do you want to come along to the event? We'd love for you to join. And that's when I was like, that's not fair. Like, that makes me feel like I'm being pushed away and going like, oh, we don't want you. You're kind of ruining my image. I feel like maybe because I did a YouTube video and started talking about, you know, I'm not being invited to events and I got really upset on the whole video and I got really like, you know, warm about it. I think brands started to kind of like see that and go, oh yeah, maybe we definitely need to look at that because it is something they definitely still need to improve on. I mean, it's been hard because at the minute, obviously with the whole world being in lockdown, it's been really hard to kind of go back to normal, but it has gotten a little bit better. Still have to kind of like, you know, get back to normal and see if it will improve. And But I'm hoping that it will kind of like go upwards because it can't get any worse than it is. And I think it is just, it's just really important to get everyone included. And I think that's, if you're doing that as a brand, I think that shows how incredible you are. And I think I respect a brand when they include everybody and not just because it looks good for them, because there's nothing worse than when a brand does it just for the ta diversity tick box. That's my worst thing, like I hate that. It's when they just wanna, they just wanna know you and I think once you get to know a person as well, I think that is really nice as well. Not just going over you in a wheelchair, like I'm just, I'm more than that. Like I've got a personality, I love having a laugh and I've got the same passions as everybody else. So it's just important to kind of include everybody and make everyone feel accepted as well.